Welcome and thank you for keeping it KTN Farmers TV. Today on AgriTalk we'll be talking about agricultural insurance. And with me today is Sian Malama, who is the head of uh, inclusive insurance at AP Insurance. Welcome to the show, Malama. Thank you very much for the idea. Tell us a little bit about uh, what you do uh, when you, we say inclusive insurance. Uh, sure. What is it all about? Yeah, inclusive insurance um, is a business unit uh, within APA uh, group and our main focus is really around serving uh, low income and emerging uh, consumers mm -hmm. uh, with, with uh, suitable and affordable insurance uh, products. Um, you know, if you look at uh, Kenya, for example, you know, we've got about 32 million low income consumers and very few of them actually make use of some form of insurance a product to, to, uh, you know, to mitigate some of the risks. So our, our main drive and our main focus is, is on the emerging consumers that, uh, that we want to protect in, in okay. Kenya. So when we talk about um, agricultural insurance policies, what are they exactly? Yeah, so agricultural insurance, um, I mean, so th these are really policies that, uh, that protect farmers um, uh, you know, against uh, damages to, to the crop um, or to, to livestock. Uh, and they really use them as, as, a, as a risk mitigation um, uh, mechanism. Uh, against, especially with the increase in, in climate risk that, that, that we, we're currently seeing. You know, so insurance is, is one way that, that farmers can, can, can uh, safeguard or protect their investment mm -hmm. uh, against, against uh, you know, risks that are beyond, beyond their control. Okay. So how is the penetration at the moment? The insurance penetration is, is quite low. Uh, uh, I mean, in, in Kenya alone, it's, it's, it's less than 3%. I think mm -hmm. we're sitting around about 28 2.8%. Uh, percent uh, insurance penetration uh, across uh, across Africa it's, it's still very low as well um, you know still under under three percent so it just shows that there's there's a lot that needs to be done uh, to increase uh, uh, penetration uh, and this can only be done or one of the ways that uh, that we need to be able to do this is by really uh, ensuring more people uh, that that need that need insurance uh, protection the most because at the moment it's very very so much um, uh, segmented uh, and concentrated in terms of uh, like your middle to high income uh, consumers and, and low income consumers are really, really left, left, left behind. So we, we, have, we have a huge um, uh, opportunity ahead of us in terms of trying to bridge that gap uh, to make sure that more people uh, are protected through, through uh, insurance solutions that, uh, that they can make use of. Okay. So wh what are some of the activities maybe APA is, is carrying out to ensure that it can uh, narrow the gap? Yeah, so I mean, you know, some of the activities that we're doing, if you look at the agriculture, agriculture sector, uh, APA is, is the lead insurer uh, in Kenya, where we, where we work uh, in partnership with uh, the Ministry of Agriculture through, through a, pu a public-private uh, partnership. Uh, and the whole partnership is really focusing on, on building more resilience for, for, for small-scale farmers. But I mean, uh, uh, in Kenya alone, um, agriculture, you know, contributes uh, in excess of 30 percent to, to GDP. So it's, it's a huge sector, right, that, 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 cannot be, that cannot be ignored. And probably about 70 percent um, of Kenyans are involved in some form of agriculture uh, activities. Uh, and and our, our program is, is, is targeting mainly small-scale farmers where we can protect uh, small-scale farmers against, against uh, climate risks uh, and risks that are beyond, beyond their control to help them overcome uh, and recover, recruit some of the investments uh, that, they, that they're plowing into in terms of their, their agriculture uh, activities. Yeah. Okay. When you talk of small-scale farmers, how many are you working with at the moment? Because the majority of our, our farmers are small-scale farmers. Yeah, so I mean, we, we've been involved um, in, in the program since, since around about 20, 2015. Uh, over five years, and over 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 the time, you know, cumulatively, we've, we've managed to, to ensure just over a million uh, small-scale farmers in uh, uh, in Kenya. Um, you know, in terms of our, our crop insurance, uh, we're currently in about 32, 33 counties uh, where where we were active uh, in terms of insuring uh, insuring our farmers, uh, and and we've got a very ambitious uh, goal uh, going ahead in terms of you know we want to make sure that we can we can protect more and more farmers, uh, you know, especially with with food security. Uh, that, that's, that, that, that's under a huge threat uh, going forward. We definitely want to make sure that uh, you know, we, can, we can cover a uh, majority of the farmers uh, in, in all uh, 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 counties of, of, of Kenya. Yeah. Okay, so um, currently, um, where are the majority of farmers you're working with at the moment? So, so I mean, majority of, of, of our farmers, uh, so like in the western uh, areas of, of, of the country, um, you know, but um, uh, our, our livestock insurance program, for example, we are in, we're in eight counties, uh, but our, our crop insurance, we're in 32 counties, uh, and, and we're looking at, at extending that from, from 32 to about 40 counties, uh, you know, over, over the next sort of like two to three years. Uh, and, and this is really uh, important for us, and, and it's, it's something that, that we know that 
that the industry cannot do alone. And that's why, you know, the partnerships uh, with, with, with the Ministry of, of, of Agriculture uh, are key partnerships because, you know, they enable us to, to reach uh, into certain areas that, that we can't reach as, as APA okay. uh, as, as AP alone. All right. In the counties that you're working in at the moment as APA, uh, what particular crops do farmers uh, ensure they uh, take policies for? Yeah, I, think, I mean, the, yeah, the, the, the main, the main uh, crop that, that, uh, that work in is, is maize. Uh, the majority of the farmers um, are involved in, in, in maize, uh, maize farming. So it's, it's really one of the crops that, uh, that, that we ensure. Uh, you know, there are other crops that we ensure in terms of like um, sorghum or, or potatoes and, and, and other, other crops. But uh, with, with maize being the, the main uh, uh, crops, you find that majority of, of, of small scale farmers are involved uh, in, in maize farming. Okay. Um, are this, most of these farmers, um, you talked about Western Kenya. What about some of the arid and semi-arid regions like um, Lower Eastern? Are there farmers that you work with? Yes, yes. Uh, we, we definitely do work, work with farmers in, in, in the Lower Eastern as well. Um, so the, the, the program is really not limited to, uh, to only certain areas in, uh, uh, in the country. Uh, you know, as our, our goal and our ambition is, is to get to, uh, to at least about 40 counties. Uh, in the next in the next two years you know so we we want to make sure that you know farmers across across the country are, are protected and covered uh with 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 insurance protection yeah okay so when you visit these farmers uh what are some of the issues they they raise especially when uh you're approaching them the first time and maybe uh, talking to them about taking an insurance policy what are some of the issues they bring up or what do they think about the insurance policies okay. I think what, 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 we, what we see um, happening is is majority of the farmers uh, that take up insurance are literally buying insurance for the first time, right? Mm -hmm. So we find that um, th there's very limited knowledge or limited awareness of, of what insurance is and, and the value of, 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 of insurance and how insurance can, can help um, mitigate some of the risks, uh, you know, and they can recoup some of the investment that, uh, that, that they make. So we find that that, that aspect is, is, is quite a huge challenge in terms of uh, awareness and, and understanding of, mm -hmm. of, of how insurance and how insurance works. Um, we've also seen that there's, uh, there's a huge uh, trust barrier uh, uh, between between farmers and, and the financial sector, not just insurance, right? Mm -hmm. And we're really trying to see how can we bridge that gap uh, because, you know, if, 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 if with trust barriers, uh, it, it, we find it as... As, as something that is a hindrance in terms of uptake of, 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 of insurance solutions. You know, so we're really trying to uh, work, uh, uh, work hard and invest a bit more uh, in, in education and awareness. Uh, you know, because if, if you don't know what, what you're buying, you, you, you can't buy it, right? I think you, you need to know ex and understand first what, what you're buying mm -hmm. uh, to enable you to, to really appreciate what the, the value of, of, of what insurance can be. Okay. And as an insurance company, do you work directly with the farmers or? There are also people and uh, other organizations that help you maybe mobilize these farmers on the ground. Hundred percent. Yeah. So, like, I mean, if, we, uh, if I look at our, our programs at the moment, um, our biggest distribution channels uh, are through other partnerships, uh, through aggregators. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so these are aggregators that work directly uh, with farmers. Um, you know, for, to give an example, uh, we work with aggregators such as as Apollo Agriculture, um, uh, Acre Africa. Uh, you know, these these are aggregators that. Uh, that are involved in the day-to-day the, the -day, uh, with, with farmers. Uh, we've found that, that, that partnerships of, of that nature really help us to, to reach the end, uh, uh, end consumer. Because we, I mean, as, as an insurance company, we just don't have the capacity to, uh, you know, to have uh, you know, tens of thousands of, 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 of field agents uh, on the ground. But we found that through our partnership um, with, with, with aggregators that I had mentioned, uh, it's much easier to, to access, uh, access the farmers. Uh, and in addition to that, um, you know, when, when you're dealing with, uh, with those small scale farmers is you need the volumes, right? You need the numbers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for programs to be sustainable, you know, so, so doing it on a one-to-one -one basis is, is just not sustainable. It's not cost effective, uh, you know, so we find that, that, that distributing through, uh, through partnerships and through aggregators um, uh, has been quite effective. Okay. Let's say, for example, I'm watching this program today. Um, I've never... Uh, taken insurance before. So what's the procedure or what's the process of me uh, taking insurance? Yeah, so uh, generally what, what, uh, the way that we distribute our insurance is we normally bundle it with, with, with other inputs that, that farmers uh, are taking. Yeah. Um, you know, so if, for example, if a farmer is, is accessing a loan 
uh, from, from one of the aggregators or whether, with, whether it's through inputs. What we would normally do is we attach insurance uh, to, to that so, so that it's one holistic package uh, that, that the farmer would, would buy as opposed to uh, it's supposed to get in inputs and then buying insurance and then getting other 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 supplies. Mm -hmm. So we find that you know providing a more uh, so like a 360 financial solution uh, for for the farmers, which we normally embed uh, or bundle insurance uh, with with other uh, services that that the farmers are accessing from okay. uh, from from other parties. Do you also provide maybe agronomical um, training or anything, so that to ensure that uh, even as they take insurance and they take um, these other products you are assured at the end of the day they are doing the right thing so that um, the crop doesn't fail not because of the weather but maybe because of uh, the farmer not following the right procedures in maybe growing a crop. Yeah. Do you work with agronomists or um, extension officers? Yeah, hundred uh, percent, and and it's through the, through our partnerships that that we actually make use of those services, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like you have mentioned, uh, you know, good farming practices is mm -hmm. definitely key uh, and important in uh, for, for for our farmers. So we do have uh, we do have our own in-house uh, agronomists that uh, that do work closely with uh, with our distribution partners uh, in terms of when when it comes to training, uh, you know, and we do actually go out there uh, in the field when uh, when when our partners uh, congregate the farmers and where we educate farmers. And where we train farmers uh, in terms of uh, some of the best practices and, and how you know how to go, how to go about improving their farming uh, farming activities because as, as an insurance company you know we don't just want to provide insurance solutions uh, but we believe that you know if we empower farmers uh, to be better farmers uh, and with, with with good farming uh, skills and, and training um, you know the better for for that for that farm in terms of uh, realizing their, their investment you know so so those are some of the services that that, that we do provide and we do extend to uh, to, to the farmers that, that that we that we work with okay in the current world technology plays a very big role uh, what kind of technologies do you employ to also make sure that um, maybe you can track what the farmers are doing uh, I don't know whether you are using the satellite or the smartphones yeah so there's, there's there's different ways that we that we make use of technology um, for example, if uh, if I look at the the livestock insurance program uh, that that we run in, uh, this is a program where uh, where the uh, where the conditions are monitored, you know, via satellite, mm -hmm. where we monitor the. Uh, uh, the, the the forage on, on the ground in terms of for for, for animals to to graze uh, on it you know so you know we use technology in, in that sense uh, we use technology in terms of uh, communicating and educating our farmers you know for, through through SMSs uh, through USSD platform where farmers can actually log on uh, and learn about you know about crop insurance or about livestock insurance and other insurance solutions that mm -hmm. uh, that 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 they, that they need to make uh, use of so we've found that the, you know mobile devices is is a very very powerful tool. Um, uh, you know, especially in terms of communicating uh, to farmers. Uh, also, when it comes to to things like uh, 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 claims payouts, uh, you know, uh, more often what we how we pay claims is we pay claims uh, through 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 mobile wallets. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, for example, the recent claim that that we had in in Masabit County. Uh, you know, farmers were paid via 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 M-Pesa, via via the mobile wallet, and and that's how technology sort of enables us to to reach farmers at at a, at a cost-effective uh, uh, channel. Okay, let's also talk a little bit about the livestock farmers. How how are you working with them, with with the livestock farmers, especially in area and semi-arid areas? Yeah, so the the, the livestock farming uh, program is is the second program that that, that we have partnered with uh, mm -hmm. with the Ministry of, of, of Agriculture, um, and through the program, uh, the ministry actually subsidizes a premium on, on behalf of, of, of the farmer. Mm -hmm. So the so the government pays pays the premium on, on behalf of the farmer, and and we as APA provide the insurance uh, our coverage for it, and and this is through. Uh, an insurance group that that we've that we've created in, in the market. So the group uh, it consists of seven seven local underwriters, uh, local insurance companies, uh, to enable us to to retain more for for for, for the market uh, in terms of in terms of capacity. Um, and the, through through that, we are able to and through the through the government, we're able to reach uh, more farmers uh, to ensure that farmers are, are, are onboarded and registered onto uh, onto the onto the program. Um, and uh, so far, we have about um, just over eighty thousand um, uh, pastures that 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 we that we cover mm -hmm. uh, on on the livestock uh, on the livestock pro, uh, program. Okay. So, for example, how much do you, is a policy for? Let's say I have ten cows. What do you look at before uh, deciding this is the best policy for me? 
So for, for, for small scale farmers, it, it's, it, the, the, the program is slightly different. What, how it actually works is we don't actually insure the cow uh -huh. or, or, or the animal. What, what we do is we, we insure the cost of, of trying to keep that animal alive. Right. Oh. So, for example, um, through, through the satellite monitoring I had mentioned earlier on, uh, is we monitor the forage uh, on the ground and, and how much grazing that animals are able to uh, to feed feed off the ground, mm -hmm. and if, if 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 the forage is uh, is not at a certain uh, uh, level, uh, it triggers a payout, right? And then we'll pay out based on the percentage of, of, of what of what that what that value is. So, for example, you know, for um, for for a goat, as, as as an example, you know, the, the average the average cost is about one thousand four hundred shillings uh, to 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 keep that that goat uh, that goat alive, and, and that that would be the, the value that that would ensure it. You know, so if if there was a trigger, a claims trigger of, of say thirty percent, uh, would pay thirty percent uh, of of that of that value uh, to to the farmer, uh, and the idea behind that is that that that. That, that income that the farmer gets from the insurance payout mm -hmm. should enable them, to, you know, to buy other supplies or buy other forage to keep to keep the, the, the animal uh, alive. Because what what, it, what we don't want is 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 for is for animals to, to start dying, right? Mm -hmm. Because of uh, because of drought. So that's that's how the program works. So we we actually don't te technically insure insure the uh, the, the yeah. animal itself, but we insure the cost of, of, of keeping the animal alive. Yeah. Okay. Also, that now that you you use the satellite uh, to monitor forage and feed. Do you share the same with the, because they are pastoralists, so if you realize fodder on this region is drying up or is being consumed, yet there is another region that seems to be greener, and do you also advise them or share the same uh, information with them so that they can move to a better um, grazing region? Yes, 100%, and, and that's, that's part of, of, of the awareness and education uh, uh, component that, uh, that we work with, right? Um, uh, you know, with, 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 the, with the continuous changes in, in weather um, and, and climate, climate change, it's, it's a bit difficult to, to sort of like predict, uh, but we do, we do share that information and okay. we do educate farmers in, t in terms of, uh, you know, which are the, which are the areas uh, that, that, that we need to be concentrating on here. Now that you mentioned climate change, how bad is it, uh, or how uh, is it affecting um, farming activities, especially in in a country like Kenya and in Africa? Yeah, I mean, uh, climate change or climate risk is, is definitely um, a threat to, to food security uh, globally. I think it's it's it, you know climate change is no longer. Uh, a myth, uh, it's, it's reality. Uh, I mean, you know, we, we heard from, from, from Glasgow, the COP26 uh, uh, recently that happened, how there's, there's a need for, for, for agency in terms of, in terms of action, um, you know, because food, secu food security is, is, is a threat, right, uh, because of the increase in uh, risk that, that, that climate change uh, is, is bringing. You know, so, so Kenya is, is, not, is not immune to it, you know, I think. Um, yeah, historically, um, you know, Kenya will probably go through through a bad drought like one every every ten years um, now or so. But we've seen that 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 will probably start changing, right? I think uh, you know large uh, events are, are happening more more frequent uh, in terms of in terms of droughts, uh, you know, and this this is just impacting directly onto uh, onto onto majority onto, onto the small scale farmers uh, that that are heavily impacted. Okay, uh, do you think we are doing enough? To mitigate uh, climate change and global warming, at the moment, I think we can do more. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there, there is a lot of uh, action that is that is on paper, uh, but I think where where we need to accelerate uh, some of that is, is definitely on the implementation uh, aspect. I think we need to accelerate some of the initiatives that uh, that have been discussed at a global uh, at a global uh, level. We, we can't we can't we can't keep on having boardroom discussions uh, around it. I think I think it's really time now that that we really start implementing uh, and putting some of those, those initiatives into, okay. uh, into, into action. Early on, we talk about penetration. Um, and you gave a little bit of, of issues that um, are affecting uh, the penetration of insurance policies. What do you think we need to do to, to improve uh, the penetration of, in, uh, of insurance policies? And in terms of education as well, um, how do we educate our population? Or, how, what, do, what do you think is the best way to educate the population on the importance of uh, insurance policies? Sure. Um, I mean, if, if I can touch on, on the penetration uh, uh, question first, um, you know, in, in, if, if, I, if I take Kenya as an example, you know, we're sitting, I think, around about 2.6, 2.7. Uh, insurance penetration rate, and we've seen that trend uh, literally decreasing right over over the, the past so like three to four years. 
you know, there's, there's a gradual decrease in, 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 in insurance penetration. Um, and in, in, in my opinion, this is mainly driven by um, the industry mainly focusing uh, on, on already insured customers, right? So we're all fighting for the same, for the same customer, uh, you know, come, come renewal stage, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of like a bloodbath, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, who's got the cheapest rate, who's got the cheapest premium, you know, so, so we're not seeing growth uh, coming from that. Uh, I think to increase penetration, we, uh, the industry has to really go down uh, the, the, the food chain, uh, you know, where we need to start insuring people that have never had insurance uh, before because that, that, that's where the opportunity is, that's where the growth opportunity um, uh, is going to come from. Um, you know, in Kenya we've got 32 million uh, emerging consumers and probably only about 3.54% of those consumers uh, make use of some form some form of insurance, you know, so it just shows you the opportunity um, that that is out there in terms of in terms of trying to increase that uh, that penetration. Um, you know, we we need more uh, more simplified products. Uh, we need we need to move away from from traditional complex uh, insurance insurance solutions um, and and really make it accessible and and, and take insurance, uh, you know, to where to where the consumers are. Uh, you know, so I think for, you know for me those those are the main the main drivers uh, in mm -hmm. terms of in terms of increasing. Uh, uh, penetration. Uh, in terms of in terms of awareness and education, uh, we definitely need to invest more uh, in, in educating uh, our farmers. You know, I'd mentioned earlier on that most, most of most of the farmers that, that would buy insurance, or most of the emerging consumers, if we put it that way, that would buy insurance are first time are first time users. You know, they've never used insurance before. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's 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 a need to 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 drive uh, awareness and education. Uh, first, because people won't buy something that they don't know or something that they, they haven't heard of, you know. So more color, more collaboration with 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 various stakeholders uh, okay. is is definitely required, uh, you know, to increase that awareness and that education uh, aspect, you know, so that that people can understand and see the value uh, of, of 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 insurance. Okay, um, we'll take a short commercial break, but we'll be back shortly. For our viewers back at home today, we are talking about agricultural insurance, but we are taking a short commercial break, but we'll be back in a few.